Realme Lamang is a pre-Hispanic epic poem of the Ilocano people of the Philippines. The story was handed down orally for generations before it was written down around 1640 by a blind Ilocano writer named Pedro Bucane. Don Juan and his wife Nomongan lived in Albuan, now part of La Union in the northern part of the Philippines. They had a son named Lamaang. Before Lamaang was born, Don Juan went to the mountains in order to punish a group of their Igorot enemies. And when Lamaang's time came to deliver the plaid made home, there was not one who was not cold. The midwife, the fish hooker named Alisot, the diver named Marcos, Pasho, the rich man. Since none of them could induce delivery, they remember the woman, shriveled with age, for she was known for her strong fingers. The baby started to talk as soon as the old woman delivered him. The baby spoke, Let my name be Lamang when you have me baptized, and let the old man, named Gibuan, be my godfather. He also asked his mother where his father was. After nine months of waiting for his father to return, Lam Ang decided he would go look for him. Namongan thought Lam Ang was up to the challenge, but she was sad to let him go. During his exhausting journey, he decided to rest for a while. He fell asleep and he had a dream about his father's head being stuck on a pole by the eagle rock. Lam Ang left for the forest, the place of eagle rocks for he wanted to see the father he sprang from. For he had with him the stone of Sagam, the stone of Tangrabay of Laulogigan, a wild carabao amulet. When he passed by the grove of Kanya Vernal, the shoots bent down, for he also had the amulet of the centipede. And having reached the river's ford, he spied the tallest tree around, a rancheria, a land of tattooed Igorot country. He went directly to the assembled revelers, for he had seen his father's skull facing the east, caged in woven end of a bamboo pole. Lam Ang was furious when he learned what had happened to his father. He rushed to their village and killed them all, except for one whom he let go, so that he could tell other people about Lam Ang's greatness. Upon returning to Nalbuwan in triumph, he was bathed by women in the Amborayan River. All the fish died because of the dirt and odor from them on his body. Then there was a young woman named Ines Canoyan, whom Lam Ang wanted to woo. She lived in Kalamitian and he brought along his rooster and his dog to visit her. On their way, Lam Ang met his enemy, Sumara, another suitor of Ines whom he fought and readily defeated. Lam Ang found the house of Ines, surrounded by many suitors, all of whom were trying to catch her attention. He had his rooster crow, which caused a nearby house to fall. This made Ines look out. He had his dog bark, and in an instant, the fallen house rose up again. The girl's parents witnessed this and called for him. The rooster expressed the love of Lam Ang. The parents agreed to a marriage with their daughter if Lam Ang would give them a dowry double to their wealth. Lam Ang had no problem fulfilling this condition, and he and Ines were married. It was a tradition to have a newly married man swim in the river for their round fish. Unfortunately, Lam Ang plunged straight into the mouth of the water monster Bird Kaka. Ines had Marcos, the diver, to get Lam Ang's bones, which she covered with a piece of cloth. His rooster crowed and his dog barked, and slowly the bones started to move. Back alive, Lam Ang and his wife lived happily ever after with his rooster and his dog. <laughs>